What up, ladies and gents? Again, BC41, antiderivatives and indefinite integration. Uh, we're going to start differ. I'm sorry, integration in this specific unit. Um, units four, and then the next couple are kind of more uh, integration. We're going to go through a lot of the different rules um, and things like that, Riemann sums and whatever. And so let's kind of get going, I guess. So antiderivative. Anti um, the function f of x is an antiderivative of g of x if f prime is equal to g for all x. Now what does that mean? Well, so if f of x is equal to 3x squared, what is the antiderivative of f of x? That means that it's going to be x to the third. And you're like, well, why? Why does that make sense? Hopefully you remember from, you know, uh, a, B, how to figure out the derivative, but, or the antiderivative, but, so it's x to the third because um, the derivative, the derivative of x to the third equals 3x squared, right? So it is 3x squared, and because it's going to be, you're basically saying the derivative of x to the third with respect to x is equal to 3x squared. So this is your like proper notation, right? That's what that kind of means. Uh, so that's what we're doing. We're going to do some antiderivatives here. Indefinite, not definite. Hopefully you remember the difference. If not, it's not a big deal. We'll go over it. Okay. Um, so the antiderivative for a function f of x is just an antiderivative, not the antiderivative. There can be infinitely many antiderivatives for any function. So what is the antiderivative of 4x to the 4th? Well, we're going to say that this could be x to the 4th plus 3. What about x to the 4th minus 5? Or x to the 4th plus pi? Okay, we can do any one of those. Um, it doesn't really matter. So the reason are the last kind of digits here. And so this is really going to be x to the 4th plus some c. And this c is just any constant, right? It's just any number um, that when I take the derivative of any number, remember it goes to zero, so that doesn't matter. Okay, so the antiderivative must have a c, which is called the constant of integration. Um, the operation of finding the antiderivative is called antidifferentiation or indefinite integration. Now, the reason it's called indefinite is because we're not finding the value of such integration. We're not finding that. It's called, it's called area underneath a curve. We're not finding that right now. We're just finding out the expression of what the antiderivative is uh, of a function. Okay. So down here are some um, kind of notes or, or, I don't know, some symbols or whatever we got to make sure we understand. So remember this funny looking S. Um, remember this really comes from the uh, the summation formula okay it's the summation um, that kind of goes into this little s here uh, it is what it is our integral symbol right into integral symbol pretty easy um, this here is what's called the integrand so right from here to here is called the integrand that's basically what you're trying to find the integral of this here the d of x it just says variable of inf inf uh, integration. So um, that's the variable that we're always going to integrate with respect to. Now, right now, for the for the time being, we're going to um, take the derivative with respect to whatever, or I'm sorry, the antiderivative with respect to whatever variables in that f prime of x piece. Uh, later on in, um, I don't know if so much in, in BC, but definitely in Calc 3 if you ever make it that far. Um, you will take derivatives, um, multi-dimensional, der multi-dimensional anti-derivatives. Uh, so you'll take um, an anti-derivative of three variables potentially, like x, y's, and z's, or x, y's, z's, and w's. Like four, it's pretty easy actually, but that that's where you're going to have different variables. Okay, um, over here, this is what we call our constant of integration. Okay, so. When I take the, der the antiderivative of the derivative, okay, so f prime is equal to the derivative. But when I take the, the antiderivative of the derivative, I get the original function, right? 
and then plus some c value. So I got to make sure I understand that. The antiderivative of the derivative just gives me the original function back. All right. So some basic integration rules. So if I take the antiderivative of 0 dx, that's just 0x plus some c. Um, because 0 is a constant, right? So the derivative of any constant is 0. And so the antiderivative of 0 is just some constant. So that's just equal to c. The derivative of some k is just the k times the integral of dx. And technically there's a 1 here. And so then I take k times... Well, the antiderivative of 1 is just x, so that's just kx, okay? And then plus some c. I always have that c. Um, i got to take care of it and make sure I put that constant of integration there. Uh, what else? So I get uh, the antiderivative of k times the f prime. So that's just saying it's k times the derivative of f prime of x dx, which is equal to k times f of x which is k times f of x that way, right? So the antiderivative of f prime is f of x. we got to go make sure we understand that. The next one here is this. I'm going to split this into two different integrals. Um, so technically, there should be a dx right there. Um, but because an equal sign and because you have brackets around the thing, technically, the BC test, even the AB test, would have counted that as correct if you forgot your dx there. Um, if you did not have these brackets around f prime and g prime, then it would be marked wrong. All right, but if you had those brackets around it with the equal sign right next to it, it would have counted it right, and it technically would still be right now. It's just make sure we get that dx in there. Don't miss points just because you forgot a dx, right? Um, so this is this would be the antiderivative of f prime of x dx plus the uh, antiderivative of g prime of x dx, which is then equal to uh, f of x plus g of x plus some c. Now, I can say that this is also f, f of x plus c, and then this is, or like f of x plus c1, or, and this is g of x plus c2, and then c1 plus c2 is, that doesn't necessarily matter. One constant is all you need, all right? You don't need to have multiple different constants because a constant plus a constant is still a constant, all right? Uh, it doesn't matter what that value is. Uh, and this one here, we're going to actually come up with a rule for this now. So what we're doing is um, when we take the antiderivative of some polynomial function, we get the polynomial function. We are going to take it and then add 1 to it. And then we're going to divide by that n plus 1 value. And then we're going to have our c. Okay? And this is the power rule for integration. So this is what we call the power rule for integration. Uh, this only works for polynomial functions. Uh, actually, it works for a whole bunch of stuff, but for the most part, polynomial works better. Um, it does work for, um, like, to the negative numbers and things like that. That's fine, too, um, with exponents in your denominator or whatever. But for the most part, this works really well for uh, more polynomials because it's just faster that way. All right, let's get on to the next page. Some examples. Okay, so this is 3 times x dx integrated. So it's really 3 times the integral of x dx. And now the power rule says 3 times. This is x squared over 2, right? And then plus some c. So I get 3x squared over 2 plus some c. Fantastic. This here, I'm going to rewrite it as x to the negative 2 dx. And then I'm going to say, um, okay, I got... So now let's use that power rule. We are going to get uh, x to the negative 1. Or we add 1 over that value. So that's going to be, uh, now I'm going to kind of make it a little bit different. So it's going to be negative 1 over x to the 1 and then plus some c value. You can leave it as negative x to the negative 1 plus c. That's fine too. It's the same thing. You don't have to be all like specific or whatever. It's not a big deal. Okay. Uh, let's go to some square roots and some other kind of binomials and things like that. Um, and then we'll call it a day here. So this one here uh, is, can be rewritten as t to the 1 half uh, dt. And then uh, t to the 1 half, we're going to do the same thing. So it's t. I'm going to add, a, add, a, add 1 to it. So it's 3 halves over 3 halves. But remember when I divide, technically the, it's now 2t to the 3 halves over 3, right? So this technically flips, and then plus some c. Uh, if you wanted to write it as 2 times the square root 
of t to the third over three plus c, that's fine. If you wanted to write it as two t square root of t over three plus some c, that's fine. There's multiple different ways to write them. I'm just gonna write it one way from now on. If you wanna write it a different way, you're more than welcome to do that. I don't really care. Uh, this one here can be split up, so it's y dy plus the integral from two dy. And so this here is gonna be y squared over two, this here is going to be 2y and then plus c, right? Okay. Uh, this one here, I'm gonna, I don't really have to split it up all the time. If I can do it in my head, I'm, I can do it in my head. So I'm going to do that real quick. So this is 2 theta to the third over 3 minus 3 theta squared over 2 plus theta, right? Or it's theta 1 over 1, uh, theta 2 to the 1 over 1. But that's fine. And then remember, we have that plus c. Okay, so there we go there. Uh, this one is a little different. So because I have a monomial in my denominator, I'm going to split that up into make it two different fractions. So this is really the same as saying the integral of x over root x uh, dx plus the integral of 1 over root x dx. Now I'm going to kind of play with that a little bit more. And so um, this fraction is actually x over x to the 1 half, right? So if I can simplify that, that's just the square root of x. So that's just the square root of x, or better yet, just x to the 1 half dx. Plus, now I'm going to bring this x to the 1 half from my denominator to my numerator. So it's the root, or the integral of x to the negative a half dx. And now let's do our math, right? And so x to the 1 half, we kind of did that over here with the t to the uh, 1 half there. So uh, that's going to be... 2x to the 3 halves over 3. That's what that one is. Uh, plus, actually, yeah, it's still going to be a plus. When I add 1, this is now x to the 1 half over a half. So this is this here is x to the 1 half over a half, which makes it 2x to the 1 half plus some c value, right? Uh, I think that's what I got for my answer here. I did, boom shakalaka. Uh, that's it for this one. On to the next one. Deuces my gooses.